Heyo, and what is up, gang? Thank you for checking out Sledgehammer TV tonight. It has been reported just before SmackDown Live went on the air that Vince McMahon ordered a complete rewrite of tonight's SmackDown Live before the show took place. And after watching tonight's show and seeing all of the mistakes that I found in tonight's show, seeing everything wrong about it, and seeing how bad it actually was, it makes you wonder just how bad the original script could possibly have been if they had to rewrite it to make it better, and you still turned out a whole bunch of trash that made absolutely zero sense and did nothing at all to get any of us more excited for SummerSlam. To be honest with you guys, if there was a script that was written and the boss didn't like it, and Vince McMahon looked at it, ha ha, this is no good, I don't like this, then that was probably the script to go with, because it had to have been better than this. And we are going to talk about it right here and right now. Everything wrong with tonight's SmackDown Live, right here on the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show's SmackDown Live review. Let's do it. I'm lying about just how bad the quality of the script writing of tonight's show was. This guy rewrote the show, man. The show was so bad he had it rewritten, and then they ended the show with this segment tonight. It's one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my whole entire life. Roman Reigns, the golden boy of the WWE, Vince McMahon's favorite jack-off material, right? Here he comes, walking down to have this world-changing announcement of who he's going to be challenging at SummerSlam, and en route to Caleb Braxton, who's standing there patiently waiting for Roman to get there as the show's about to wind down and sign off, the scaffolding and a bunch of big old heavy production boxes suddenly fall on top of Roman Reigns, and you see it collide onto the man. You see him fall to the ground and is supposedly pinned underneath all of this garbage. You hear Kayla Braxton in the background, get him out of there, get him out of there. And then they cut to this guy. First of all, this camera's right there. Why did they have to have a secondary camera crew all of a sudden run in from all the way off to the side? Why the guys that were already there, ready to film the, the shoot, didn't just turn around and get everything? I, I don't know. That just shows you how overly produced this whole segment is. But then Roman Reigns is just sitting there. He's sitting there amongst the rubble like Godzilla. Like all of the destruction and shit around him had absolutely no effect on him. And he's not even wearing his flak jacket suit today. He's just out there in his new shirt that he's selling. And he got trampled by beams and boxes and steel. And my man's just sitting there like, I'm good. No, I'm good. He won't let medical staff check him out. He gets up from the rubble and walks away unscathed. Unscathed. We went from one shot seeing him pinned by metal to the next shot him just sitting there cool as hell. Cool as the breeze gets up and walked away all shook. And that's how SmackDown Live ended tonight. Somebody wrote that. Somebody wrote that ending. Not only does it not make sense to have the main event segment of the evening be revolved around Roman Reigns for the second consecutive night, none of what happened just made sense. My man's got a challenger. 
in mind for SummerSlam. He's coming out to announce it. So what is this meant to do? This is meant to make us try to speculate, oh, who could have done this to the big dog? Well, there's a couple of clear-cut choices. Obviously, he's been feuding with Samoa Joe. This is not outside of Samoa Joe's MO to go out and do something like this. So I wouldn't be surprised if this was just a way for them to generate some sort of an interest in a match we've seen a hundred times already and have no, uh, no interest in seeing again. If they wanted to be assholes about it, they can make it be Braun Strowman. They could have Braun Strowman coming off of the little pep talk he got from Maria Cucknellis last night. Oh, show me what kind of a monster you are, Braun. And maybe he was so pissed off about having to do that segment with her that he took it upon himself to ruin Roman Reigns' night tonight. He went to SmackDown Live to challenge the big dog for being in all the main events, for hogging up all the spotlight, for bumping him out of his spot. Maybe it'll be something like that, and we could maybe have Maria Kanellis to thank for that. I will never thank her for anything. She's god-awful. But let's, let's try to evaluate. Who else could it possibly be? Who's known for tipping over scaffoldings and crazy things like that? Who else could it be? Is it going to be The Undertaker? There was no lightning. There was no darkness. There was no smoke. Could have been Bray Wyatt? Possibly. Although his attention seemingly is somewhere else right now. But who else could it have been besides Samoa Joe? And you have two weeks until SummerSlam. Next week on the Go Home Show, they are going to reveal whoever this clown is that made this this thing happen to Roman Reigns. And we're supposed to give a shit within one week? It's got to be Joe. Who do you think it is? Let me know in the comment section down below. If not Joe, who the hell could it have been? But this whole segment was laughable. This was comedic. This was comedy at best. There was nothing dramatic about it. There was nothing intense. There was the overacting of everybody around the situation. And it was a joke. Just like the rest of tonight's episode of SmackDown Live. You think they really give a shit about SummerSlam? Because it doesn't seem so. Not much of anything that happened tonight made much sense in regards to SummerSlam. Tonight's episode of SmackDown Live opens up with Shane McMahon. And here's, here's something funny. Here's a little slap in our faces as well. The show opens up with Shane McMahon doing a video promo. To tell us that he's not going to be on the show tonight while he is actually giving a five-minute promo to open the show. You're the opening segment of the show, and you want to tell us that you're not going to be on the show while actually being on the show. Isn't that something? And it wasn't just him being like, hey, I got bad news. I know you guys will be disappointed. I'm not going to be there tonight. Enjoy the show. He went on and on and on. He wanted to talk about Samoa Joe. He had this whole thing he had to say about, I'm sorry, about Kevin Owens. Talking about everything they've gone through in the last few weeks. And blah, 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 blah. He promised to defeat Kevin Owens at SummerSlam to end his career. And the whole time he's talking, I'm thinking, I thought you weren't going to be on the show. Now, while he wasn't physically there, and if that's what he wanted to say, then say, I'm not going to be at SmackDown, don't say I'm not going to be on the show tonight. You're going to be disappointed. I'm not going to be on the show tonight. Because clearly you are. You wanted to say you're not going to be at the show tonight. Which was probably a relief to many of the people in the back. The janitor was able to take his night off. He put his mop and bucket in the back. Because he's not going to have to follow the Shane McMahon sweat trail all over the place. All of the superstars took their Shane McMahon sweat towels. The one they have designated every time they have to shake the man's hand. Or get anywhere near him. And they get that mixed sweat all over them. And they have that one towel that's only for his. They were able to leave it in their bags tonight. They could have left it in the hotel room. And I'm sure everybody was very, very relieved. That they were not going to have to deal with the bodily fluids of Mr. Shane Mick Sweatballs Pants tonight. And it was probably a great thing for them. You know Kevin Owens enjoyed it. Because he came out to officially start the show to talk about Shane McMahon. Who's not going to be on the show tonight. But let's still talk about him as if he is. But Kevin Owens... Was a gem on the mic, as always. He did a great job putting himself over, getting the fans excited about not having to see Shane McMahon's stupid face tonight. He promised to defeat McMahon and prove he doesn't belong in the ring with people like him. He pointed out that this isn't Shane McMahon's show. This is 
the Kevin Owens show. And then Drew McIntyre shows up. And we're going to have to bring the hammer down on this little ditty as well. Because Drew McIntyre showed up tonight and what he did was prove to everybody just how goddamn good he is. Drew McIntyre don't give a shit made me give a shit about him tonight. But the sad thing about it and the reason why it's something wrong with tonight's SmackDown Live is because... In showing you just how good he is, it also simultaneously shows you just how much of a waste that he is in the eyes of the WWE. They have him next to Shane McMahon. If you take him away from Shane McMahon like you did tonight, although he was standing up for his friend in his defense of him to fight Kevin Owens in the first place, there was no Shane McMahon involvement. This guy went out there and put on a great match with Kevin Owens, and you could see why he should be one of the main central focuses of the show. The way the guy goes in ring is fantastic. This was a very good match between these two guys, and it was one of the only good things about SmackDown Live. But at the same time, watching Drew McIntyre lose time after time against no matter who he's in the ring with, whether it's Roman Reigns or Kevin Owens, Drew McIntyre goes out there, proves to be one of the best in the ring, and never has truly had a moment to shine. He could be one of the top heels in the company, but they do not want to give him his due. They want to keep using him to try to put the baby faces over, never truly establishing his own momentum. And when you watch that match tonight, it makes you just wonder why. As Kevin Owens defeated Drew McIntyre tonight for essentially no reason at all. Apparently, this is going to get under the skin of Shane McMahon, Kevin Owens hits a super kick and a stunner for the win. In the back, Caleb Braxton is interviewing Dolph Ziggler, and while he's not crying all over the place, talking about it should have been him being the WWE champion, he's talking about legends. He's calling out the legends, and I'm I'm asking why. He wants to talk about guys like Mick Foley and Goldberg and Shawn Michaels. Like he's the new kid in town. You got almost 10 years in the company. You're not the fresh new thing around here. Why are you challenging the legends and not the people that are actually around? Sure, he had some shit to say about The Miz. He had some shit to say about Finn Balor. Which leads me to my next point. He has a feud against The Miz coming up. He's going to have a match with The Miz at SummerSlam. But he's being booked in a match against Finn Balor. Why? Why? doesn't make sense. He said some things during his promo that actually were pretty good. He called out The Miz by saying he's not even the best wrestler in his own home, saying that he's actually more afraid of Maurice. I thought that was a great shot from Dolph Ziggler, but in the end, it gets all wasted because who cares? Do you care about Dolph Ziggler right now? No. The guy's Another one of these guys on the roster that just gets put into any scenario where they need somebody to have a good match and have somebody lose. And that person that's going to lose more often than not is Dolph Ziggler. Although that did not happen tonight, and we will get to that in just a second. But I didn't appreciate his direction going after the legends. You can't be a legend killer, and you're not the fresh new face in town. Everything else that he said, I guess, was okay. Bailey gets approached by Ember Moon in the locker room. They want to make light about the little uh, eclipse that happened last week when Ember Moon delivered the eclipse to Bailey. She warned Ember not to make the same mistake again, which I wouldn't blame her at all. But the problem here already is the fact that the WWE is booking the SmackDown Live Women's Champion and the number one contender in the same match. As tag team partners, this is just something that they do over and over and over again because they are so lacking in ideas and so starved of creativity that they have no idea how to book a singles feud anymore. That they have to keep going to the well and doing the same old thing over and over again. This was a pointless segment. It was just to remind everybody what happened last week. And some of the other things that I wanted to focus in on right now while we're talking about Bailey and Ember Moon. Do you realize tonight that in one night, your Intercontinental Champion, your United States Champion, the SmackDown Live Women's Champion, the Raw Tag Team Champions, and the number one contender for the SmackDown Live Women's Champion all lost in one night? You want to tell me there was nothing wrong with this show? You can't tell me that. Excuse me. 
Let's continue on. In the back, Alistair Black. Let's talk about Alistair Black right now. Alistair Black is doing the same thing he was doing prior to his two matches with Cesaro. Apparently, so he's done with Cesaro. He wants to move on. He goes on and gives one of the most confusing <laughs> promos I've ever heard. Sounded like something that the Ultimate Warrior would write. And as an example, he ended this promo with the line saying that he's sitting in purgatory, but he's being a little less patient this time, and he's waiting for somebody to come and figure out what it is he's trying to do. What is it that you're trying to do exactly? I'm trying to figure out what you're trying to do. You're sitting in the back talking about wanting people to come fight. He's doing something. I, I don't know. I don't enjoy these weird Aleister Black promos. I think it makes him look very, very strange and not very imposing. It just makes him look like a big weirdo. How about you just keep him quiet and let him deliver in the ring and I think everybody would be all the better for it. Let's talk again about the women's division tonight. Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross defeated Bailey and Amber Moon. I don't know why we had to see Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross again for the second night in a row. Or why Alexa Bliss is being involved in both women's championship storylines. I don't know why the WWE insists on booking opponents as a tag team. More importantly, I don't know why Alexa Bliss is being allowed to pin Ember Moon. This is the number one contender, a girl that could wrestle circles around Little Ms. Bliss, and I don't know why any of this was booked. Why would you make the number one contender look like a, a fool that way? While she's on a team with the champion, subsequently giving the champion a loss as well. And then you end the whole segment with Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross celebrating. I don't care about Nikki Cross's involvement leading to Alexa Bliss delivering the twisted Bliss from the top. I don't care what the scenario is. There is no excuse. No matter who it is. Even if it's somebody that actually can wrestle and it's not an Alexa Bliss. But in this case, it is the worst possible scenario where you have somebody like Alexa Bliss pinning the number one contender. Why? It makes absolutely no sense. It makes Ember Moon look bad. It made Bailey look bad tonight. And then it all leads to Bailey hitting Ember Moon with a belly to belly as retribution for what happened last week with the Eclipse. And I'm just saying that it's, it's not really that big of a deal because she's just trying to give her a little bit of payback. But it didn't seem like a very Bailey thing to do, if you ask me. Moving on. In the back... Sarah Shriver interviewed Sami Zayn. He's in the back and he's moving his sights onto Aleister Black. He said he's always trying to pick a fight. He doesn't need a fight. What he needs is a beating. He looks like a man calling out for help more than anything else. And Sami Zayn, I guess, wants to be the one to help Aleister Black as he says he's going to expose him for everything that he is at SummerSlam. So they've set up Aleister Black getting his next fight. Somebody... Namingly, Sami Zayn has come to pick a fight with him. I guess that should be a pretty good match, but it all, all it's going to lead to is another big L for Sami Zayn. And, and why would you care about Sami Zayn challenging Aleister Black anyway? Aleister Black should just shrug this off and, and just ignore this challenge because Sami Zayn hasn't proven to be worthy of even this match. What has he done? He's done absolutely nothing. He lost in under a minute last night in the gauntlet match. And now he wants to pick a fight with somebody that can knock his jaw into next century. Doesn't really make much sense. But at least it's something different, right? It's Aleister Black versus Sami Zayn. It should turn out to be pretty good as far as the match goes. We had the King's Court with Trish Stratus because we are in Memphis, Tennessee. And I don't know what's in the water out there in Memphis. And I don't mean any disrespect. But are you guys retarded? out there maybe just a little bit or maybe you don't pay attention to social media maybe you got bad wi-fi out there in tennessee i don't know i've never been there i don't mean to be disparaging and i'm not trying to disrespect the great state of tennessee but my god you guys how did you buy into this king's court segment at all did you guys not see the same post i did I actually had a full-on conversation with a couple of my followers on twitter about this very very announcement that was made days ago about Trish Stratus versus Charlotte Flair at SummerSlam. And now 
you want to show how ass backwards this company is by having a segment on SmackDown Live tonight to book the match or issue the challenge of a match that we already know you guys booked. How does that make sense? Do you think I'm an idiot? Do you really think the fans are idiots? And then the fans in attendance want to egg on Trish Stratus. She's teasing. Maybe, maybe she'll have one more match. She's a mom now. What the hell that had to do with anything? I don't know. There are plenty of moms in professional wrestling still out there doing their thing. Maurice didn't make no bones about being a mom when she wanted to get back in the ring. The Bella Twins... Nikki Bella, I'm sorry, Brie Bella doesn't give a shit that she had Birdie. She still came back and went in the ring. What does being a mom have to do with anything? First of all, you've been a mom for years already. It's not like you're a new mom. Why is that your excuse? Which is exactly what it is. Charlotte Flair called her out on using that as an excuse. But this match was already announced. So why did this even happen? Backwards. If you didn't post that shit on social media earlier in the week, maybe this would have been something. And it's something. I mean, it still wouldn't have been any good because the dialogue in this whole entire thing was god-awful. They wanted to spend the first half of this thing having Jerry the King Lawler awkwardly talk to the woman formerly known as Trish Stratus because, goddamn, she don't look nothing like Trish Stratus. I don't know what the hell this woman did to her face, if she lost too much weight, if she had the balls put in her cheeks, if she's got collagen all over her lips so that she can't close her mouth. I don't know what's up with the gigantic overbite she suddenly has developed. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't know why she couldn't have done her roots, why she's got to have the two-tone hair thing going on. I don't know why she looks like she needs to eat a cheeseburger. I did notice that her two biggest assets happened to return. I know they kind of went away for a while, but she went back to get those done since she's going to be at SummerSlam. But that wasn't Trish Stratus. Maybe it used to be, but it definitely don't look like her anymore. And all, all of this for what? To announce a match we already knew was coming. My God. The OC met in the back. AJ Styles wanted to talk about how the three of them have championships. And he promised to defeat Kofi Kingston and prove that SmackDown Live is still the house that AJ Styles built. It was nice to see them in the back having fun, playing off each other. They have an obvious chemistry, but why are they here? Why are three champions from Raw on SmackDown Live tonight? They're going to take place in a main event versus three people on the SmackDown roster who are also champions. And I couldn't help but think during the main event tonight as we had the OC versus the New Day, how great this could have possibly been three years ago when the club first showed up and the New Day was hot as fire. But now we're returning to it and we're forcing it for what reason? You're breaking the wild card rules and all this other shit to have this match, which could have been a really good match. If you think about it, you got two singles champions versus the both shows, respective tag team champions. It's something you could have built up, something you could have made special, but instead you're just throwing it at us on a random SmackDown for absolutely no reason. There is absolutely not one thing that you could point to that makes sense for any of this happening. AJ Styles is in a feud with Ricochet for the United States Championship. That is his path for SummerSlam. Kofi Kingston's path ends with the Viper, Randy Orton. Why are they having a singles match tonight with two weeks to go to SummerSlam? A non-title match in both men's case for absolutely no reason. But you were supposed to like this match, right? We're supposed to buy in. We're supposed to enjoy this match. There was no reason for it. We'll come back a little bit more to that later. Talking about the OC just made me realize it, and we have to talk about it right now. After this was my favorite part of the evening, which it usually is, Rambling Rabbit hosted another edition of the Firefly Funhouse. Finn Balor, did you know, is Rambling Rabbit's favorite wrestler? That's good to know. Rambling Rabbit then wanted to make note that Finn Balor doesn't know what the Funhouse really is. I might know what the Firefly Funhouse really is. I might have clued you guys all into it if you watched my Bray Wyatt video 
which is up and live on the cha on the channel right now. Go check it out immediately when we're done here. I'll remind you again before this episode is over. But Rambling Rabbit hightailed it out of there when Bray Wyatt showed up and he looked pretty pissed off that Rambling Rabbit was about to reveal a little bit of something about the Firefly Funhouse. And then he started to just laugh at the camera incessantly and then ended with a very creepy let me in. They then wanted to recap what happened last night between Brock Lesnar and Seth Rollins, the vicious attack by the Beast and the Universal Champion, as he obliterated Seth Rollins on all ends, maybe breaking a few of his ribs in reality, for all we know. And today they released a statement from Seth Rollins. He requested that the WWE do not release the conditions of how he is doing right now. His medical condition is being kept secret which I guess is not a bad thing if you're going to challenge somebody for a championship and you don't want to have your match uh, compromised by your opponent knowing your weaknesses. It's kind of a smart move for them to... Something smart for them to give Seth Rollins to do makes him seem like he's not, you know, an idiot and he's not going to come out and be like, well, you know, my ribs are broken in three places and my back has three discs dislodged and this and that because that's going to immediately going to send your opponent just redlining right to those areas. So obviously it's not something that you want to release, and I'm sure we will be made uh, privy to all of the knowledge of Seth Rollins. Uh, I was going to say whereabouts, but we know where the hell he is. He's face deep in a fire bush. <laughs> I'm sorry. I couldn't resist. Anyway, let's move on before we get derailed even more than an episode of SmackDown Live. Dolph Ziggler defeated Finn Balor. And I am going to give a little bit of a forgiveness point to this only because the reason Finn Balor lost was due to the appearance of The Fiend showing up in the arena briefly. And then when the lights went out again and came back on, Bray Wyatt was gone and then got a, got <laughs> Finn Balor got hit with a super kick and got pinned by Dolph Ziggler for the win. So you have to, I mean, I don't understand why it had to be Dolph. There was another way to go about it. Instead of Finn losing to Dolph Ziggler here, you could have given Finn Balor his match against Shinsuke Nakamura that was canceled from Smackville. You could have had Shinsuke Nakamura defeat Finn Balor the very same way, thanks to the appearance of Bray Wyatt. And then you could have had Ali come out and challenge Shinsuke Nakamura next week on the Go Home Show, citing that he came so close at Smackville when he filled in for Finn Balor that he wants another chance, and you could have Shinsuke give him the chance at SummerSlam. It could have been done that way, but instead we had to put Dolph Ziggler over Finn Balor for some reason, and then we had Ali come out in an Intercontinental Championship non-title matchup versus... Shinsuke Nakamura, I don't know why I did the quotes, it was a non-title matchup, and Ali defeats and pins our Intercontinental Champion, and this is a, a example, once again, of the WWE's just incess incessant need to 50-50 book these characters. Shinsuke Nakamura, Saturday night at Smackville, beat Ali. Here we are, Three days later, and now Ali is getting his win back over the Intercontinental Champion. You guys do realize, of course, that Shinsuke Nakamura has only been the champion for three weeks. He's been the champion for three weeks. He's already lost. Clean. In the middle of the ring. To Ali. While I don't mind seeing Ali get a win, having champions lose to establish contenders is by far the most asinine way to show value in your champions, and it is the worst way to book your way to championship title matches. I absolutely hate everything about that. It was just stupid. And it makes Shinsuke Nakamura look foolish. And now we're going to essentially get this rematch and the rubber match, because they're both one and one, at SummerSlam, where the winner will most likely walk away with the Intercontinental Championship. They aired a video package about Kofi Kingston and Randy Orton, and I thought this was very, very well done. I enjoyed this package very much. The way that they highlighted 
their long-term history, the way that they made key points about Randy Orton being the reason that Ali was injured that led to Kofi Kingston getting the WWE Championship. It was very well put together. Randy Orton called Kofi Kingston stupid for challenging him to this match at SummerSlam. And I'm actually really looking forward to this one. I think this is going to be one of the better matches at SummerSlam. Randy Orton is Randy Orton. Kofi Kingston has proven to be one of the best WWE champions that there have been in the modern era. Suck it if you don't believe so. He's put on some of the best performances. He's had a nice long run since the since winning it at WrestleMania. And if he loses to Randy Orton at SummerSlam, I'll be absolutely fine with it. I will be absolutely fine with it. If he beats Randy Orton at SummerSlam, great. It establishes him as an even better champion than many of you already know he is. And if you're not on the Kofi Kingston train, that's fine. Everybody's entitled to their opinion, but you cannot tell me he has not been a great champion. They have been booking him on Raws and SmackDowns. He has been successfully defending the championship. He has been putting on quality matches. It doesn't matter about him having the pancakes and the unicorns and the trumpets and the New Day. He's been doing most of this stuff on his own, so give the man the respect he deserves. He's been a great champion, and regardless what happens at SummerSlam, I am all right with Kofi Kingston. How they used him tonight on SmackDown Live, that's a little bit of another story, which we talked about a little bit already. In the back, we had Caleb Braxton interviewing The New Day, and Kofi Kingston wanted to tell everybody, you know, that Woods and Big E are the tag team champions. I am the WWE champion, which we all clearly already knew that. He promised to defeat AJ Styles tonight. He noted this isn't the house that AJ Styles built, but it is the palace of... Of positivity. Now, I could do away with all of the stuff like this because you guys know the New Day shenanigans is something that very easily gets on my nerves. It has grown old. It has grown a little bit tiresome. But this was okay in this scenario. I don't know why this match was being booked in the first place. WWE Champion Kofi Kingston with the New Day, the champions of SmackDown Live, going up against the United States Champion from Raw, AJ Styles, with the OC, the, the Raw tag team championships this wasn't a six-man matchup but the action definitely broke down before all was said and done Kofi Kingston defeated the United States champion AJ Styles so now you have AJ Styles going into a United States championship match versus Ricochet losing on his way there I don't understand I, I, I said that the Raw tag team champions lost but you know, they weren't actually part of the match, but still, they were on the losing side of things, and this is only going to lead to some six-man tag team probably next week where it's going to happen. It might even happen on Monday Night Raw. I don't understand why they went this way. You got all of these guys involved in other storylines, and nothing that they did with anybody really mattered and did anything towards what we're trying to build at SummerSlam. You give me no reason to be interested in SummerSlam, at all. <sighs> and I think that's pretty much it as we covered everything. Oh, we had a tease once again of Daniel Bryan making his earth-shattering announcement only for him to show up and say absolutely nothing again. At this point, I don't care what he announces. He could announce he's going to 205 Live. Daniel Bryan maybe is the guy that dropped all of the garbage on Roman Reigns at the end of the night, for all we know. But we had two announcements promised to us, one by Daniel Bryan, the other by Roman Reigns. Neither one of them happened. So that's a WWE once again bait and switching us to watch, promising us something that never truly happens which is absolutely awful. And what did any of this stuff with the OC and the New Day have to do with SummerSlam? If you guys can figure it out, please make sure you let me know in the comments section down below. If I missed anything and you guys want to know about it, make sure you let me know about that as well as that brings us to the very last thing that happened on SmackDown Live this evening, which was Roman Reigns going to make his announcement suddenly... The huge scaffolding falls and boxes fell on Roman Reigns. Kayla Braxton and medical personnel scrambled to help him. Roman Reigns just stood up. Just stood up and walked away. They wanted to check on him, but he refused. And then he walked off a little bit scared. And that's how we ended SmackDown Live with the mystery of who ambushed Roman. Who set the trap for the big dog? I really... 
don't care. And SmackDown Live tonight didn't give us any reason at all to care. If you guys think I'm wrong, let me know why. Like I said, the comment section is yours. As always, if you enjoyed this episode tonight and you agreed with anything I've said at all, make sure that you smash the hammer down on that thumbs up. Make sure also that you share the hell out of this video. One of the best ways you can help this channel grow and support us is to share every thing that you watch everywhere that you possibly can so that we can continue to try to infect the world and make everybody a proud sledgehead as many of you guys i know already are thank you each and every one of you who have been with me on this ride august is around the corner and august brings forth our anniversary and we want some ideas what would you guys maybe like to see for an anniversary special is there a topic you want to hear me hit don't say NXT. I know you guys want me to do NXT, but it just isn't going to happen. I go to wrestling class Wednesday night. I don't have time to watch and review NXT in the right amount of a time frame to put it up and have it be worth it for this channel and for you guys as it will be old news by the time I get to it. Let me know, man. I'm open to some ideas and I'm always wanting you guys to let me know what you want to see so that I can keep producing the content that brings you back to your new favorite wrestling channel on all of YouTube, Sledgehammer TV, home of the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show, which is also home to the greatest fans in the whole entire world, which includes you. So thank you guys so much for joining me. Don't forget to check out, like I already teased... The Bray Wyatt video that will be sweeping the nation before it's all said and done. Five crazy ways to book Bray Wyatt. If you haven't watched it yet, go check it out. It has been said that the number one idea is one of the coolest and greatest ideas ever thought of in all of professional wrestling. So I urge you to go check it out and let me know what you think about it. When you do, I would appreciate it very much. It took a whole lot of time and a whole lot of hard work. It may be one of the greatest shorts that I've ever produced, technically speaking. And I would appreciate it if you supported that video any way you can. Go check it out right now. That, my friends, is going to be the end of tonight's SmackDown Live review. We didn't do a Smackville review because it wasn't worth my time. It was an hour that I definitely should have spent doing anything else literally anything else so there was no reason to review it it was just another reason to give a loss to Dolph Ziggler and Samoa Joe and to bore the shit out of us with Elias there's your Smackville review so that's that's it and my name ladies and gentlemen is Nick Nightmare this is the team Thor the Sledgehammer the official Sledgehammer of the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show his tag team partner the world heavyweight champion of all the microphones in all the world Mr. Blue the Snowball the most important member of the team as always is each and every one of you that my friends is going to do it and we are out of here and we will see you next time right here on your new favorite wrestling show the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show only on Sledgehammer TV right here on YouTube.com and do not forget to subscribe and try to get us to 2,000. I was going to say before the end of August. I guess we'll have to move it to the end of August. New target. Let's get it before. Screw it. Let's try to get to 2,000 before we hit SummerSlam. That gives us two weeks to get there. I know you guys had a good time. Let's get to it. Hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so that you don't miss a thing. Have a good night, you guys. I hope you enjoy the rest of your week. I'm going to continue to enjoy my vacation, and I will be back with you guys this weekend with what? I don't know, but I'll be checking the news, and I'll be here for you if anything truly pops up. Have a good night.